a lot of small businesses are saying, oh, I've got my finances taken care of. I have a bookkeeper and a CPA and I talk to my CPA once a year and my bookkeeper just sends me something every single month. And so it must all be good. Um, but they're still not feeling in control. And so I want to give you the secret to what will help you feel in control. Welcome back to the Clara CFO Group channel. This channel is all about helping small business owners succeed financially. We believe that means that you are taking back control over your money and that you know which levers to pull to change your financial outcomes. And also you know what you need to do to be profitable and to ultimately hit the goals that you have. So if that sounds like something that is interesting to you, please make sure you're subscribed to the channel because that's what a lot of our videos are about. And so we're here for you. Okay, so most small business owners, at least the ones that have been watching our channel for a while, understand that there needs to be some kind of bookkeeping process in place for businesses. So this is where, this is what most people are doing, okay? So we're gonna talk about the things people aren't doing and then things that most people are doing. Most people, and this is good, I highly encourage this, are at least having their bookkeeping done or they're having some kind of way of managing their bookkeeping and they're doing their taxes. So they have somebody who's either preparing their tax returns or maybe they're doing, them, doing it themselves with a Schedule C or something like that. So they've got those two things taken care of. Bookkeeping, which is record keeping, that's a very like base level. I have this, um, I have this blog post on the hierarchy of accounting needs and bookkeeping is kind of the base. And then we have compliance layer and that's the next thing up from there. And compliance is just like, you know, making sure your taxes are paid to the right place. And if you have payroll taxes that, you know, the right states are getting paid the right things and, and the IRS is getting what they need. Okay, so just compliance. That those are two really core functions. Most people, if you run a small business and especially if you have employees, are taking care of that part. They kind of know that that's like something they have to do. That is great. We want that. <laughs> and, you know, we need that actually, that you have to have that before we can really do anything else. So that is the foundational layer of successful finances is making sure that you have a record keeping and a compliance level in place. But a lot of small businesses are stopping there and they're saying, oh, I've got my finances taken care of. I have a bookkeeper and a CPA and I talk to my CPA once a year and my bookkeeper just sends me something every single month. And so it must all be good. Um, but they're still not feeling in control. And so I want to give you the secret to what will help you feel in control and what people are actually not doing. And that's what we're going to talk about now. So what are small businesses not doing that they should be doing? Number one, they aren't taking time to plan what's going to happen in their business and what it looks like financially before they go and execute. And when I say that, I mean that they aren't really thinking through what do they need to be taking home? We just did a video on owner's pay. What do I need to be saving for taxes? What type of profit do I need in my business in order to reinvest back into the business? What do I need for savings? All of these things like that. And they also aren't even thinking about what do my revenue trends look like? If I know that I have a seasonal business, how much can I expect to come in and how many maybe goods should I order or how many staff do I need? Or is my business pretty much staying status quo from last year to this year? All of this stuff is stuff that's really great information hidden in the brain of the CEO and the people who are um, operating the business, but that stuff needs to come out and actually be put into some kind of financial plan. And so I call this a profit plan. It's a mix between doing some profit strategy, talking about goals, and putting it together with a strategic budget. So when I say strategic budget, it means it's a budget for the coming 12 months, but it's very, very informed by the strategy of the business owner. What do they want to be doing? What are the goals of the business owner? And making sure that the budget is actually laying it, like that you put it together with those goals in mind. You know, let's say the business owner wants to save $100,000, but then when you really do the financial plan, you're looking at it and you say, well, there's no way we can save $100,000 because it looks like our profit is only $5,000 a month, which would accumulate to $60,000. And some of that's got to go to taxes and some of that's got to go to owner's draw. There's no way we can get to $100,000 in savings. So if that's the goal, what would need to change in the organization in order to produce an extra $100,000? Maybe you need to add a new product. Maybe you need to sell a new service. Maybe you need to get more onto sales and you need to increase volume. What does that look like? 
you know? And, and so if we're going to have a realistic goal like that, which maybe it's realistic, maybe it's not, that's for the business owner to determine, you need to put it into a plan. And that's where you can start to figure out business model flaws before they become reality. And I tell you, a little bit of planning in Excel can go a long way, um, or Google Sheets or whatever you wanna use, and will save you tons and tons of time and headaches down the road after you've spent the money, because we are hypothetically spending it when we're planning, okay? So we can really t tease out what are the business model flaws or what is the plan? Are there any plan flaws before we even get there? So I, I guarantee you 99 to 95% of business owners are not doing this piece. And this can be such a big game changer because you can actually make decisions and fix your trajectory before you even start on a trajectory. Um, so if this is something that you think you want help with, I do have profit planning resources below. We did a video on it and we have a workshop. I will put those in the description box below if you want more guidance on how to create that. And the beautiful thing about having a plan is that you can start to see into the future, as I mentioned. Um, the other thing that small business owners are not doing and they should be doing, this is the second thing, is they are not doing a cash flow forecast. Most business owners I talk to before they start working with us are saying, yeah, I pop open the um, bank account and that's how I know how much cash I have. And I you know, might think, oh, I've got payroll coming up and maybe this and maybe that, but they're not really thinking about a longer term plan of what will cash look like three months from now, six months from now, nine months from now, 12 months from now. And the only way you can do that is if you have some kind of actual good plan to go off of, which we talked about in step one. And then we apply that to our cash balances and we say, well, this is what it's going to look like if we don't receive, you know, if we're expecting maybe like August to really not have a lot of income, but we're going to get tons of income in September because maybe that's when a lot of renewals happen with our clients or something like that. You know, you can start to plan for any potential like cash issues. And again, you can plan for it in time that if you need to go to your bank and get a line of credit, or if you need to maybe um, push a sales cycle into a different quarter, or if you need to, um, you know, really get after collections because you didn't realize that, you know, not collecting fast enough on your receivables is causing cash problems. We've got tons of examples on how to improve cash flow in our cash flow workshop. I'll put the link to that in the description box below, as well as some videos that go along with cash flow because um, small businesses and cash flow, if you're not doing a cash flow forecast, and you have any kind of complexity or um, any kind of you know ups and downs with your cash coming in the door, um, it's going to be really hard to operate your business with transparency and actually calm <laughs> um, at the end of the day. So I really highly recommend that cash flow forecasting can be the game changer for small businesses. Now, the third thing that I don't see small business owners doing very often, really until until they're working with a CFO, is there aren't understanding and identifying which metrics and levers are really critical in order for them to succeed. And we call these KPIs, key performance indicators. They aren't sure what they need to be tracking. So some business owners might go on the way opposite side because they don't know what to track, they'll track everything. And that gets to a place of diminishing returns to where like you might be tracking 30 things, but none of them seem that important because you are just trying to put importance on all of them. So, and then on the other side, I maybe I don't track anything because I don't know what to track and I don't know what makes the most sense. Um, you know, you might be looking at maybe revenue or profit, but there's so many other things that could be happening in your business that if you were to focus on one thing or three things, maybe tops, five KPIs, those things, if you were to monitor those and work on only increasing those metrics or only improving those metrics, you would be able to focus efforts and also understand like what that actually does. So I'm going to give you a quick example. Um, we had Greg Crabtree on the, um, on the channel a couple a couple months ago, I guess I can put uh, the link to that uh, below, but Greg Crabtree has this really great KPI that he put in his book called the labor efficiency ratio. And when I'm working with service-based businesses, every time that I see the labor efficiency ratio in the optimal spot, which is two or above, the business is doing well. 
Okay. And it's like, when it's not doing well, I go and I look at the labor efficiency ratio and I'm like, well, that's why. <laughs> so, um, you know, I, I can't say that's going to work for every single business, but the labor efficiency ratio is a key performance indicator for almost all of my clients because we can look at that really quickly and we can say, this is, this is looking great or this is not looking great. So again, these are the three things, not doing planning, not doing cash flow forecasting and not identifying key metrics and KPIs. Those are the three things that most small business owners are not doing. So if you want to set yourself up for success, I'm giving, I'm giving you three really great options to start moving in that direction. Okay. Now I would say you need to do a plan before you do a cash flow forecast. KPIs can be identified at any point in time. So you could do those simultaneously. Um, it's not necessarily in order. But um, all of these things, I do have resources in the description box below. We've got a profit planning workshop and a um, planning for hire workshop, which will help you with the profit planning and growth and strategy on bringing on new team members. And then we also have the cash flow workshop. So that information is below. If you're interested in any of that, we've got you with resources. Um, and other than that, please just put comments and questions in the comment section below because I will get in there and answer as many questions as I can. All right, you guys, well, good luck with this. Be the business owner that takes the next step that doesn't just rest and say, I'm good. I'm done. I have my bookkeeping. I did my tax return this year. No, if you're really going to take it to the next level, let's do some planning. All right, let's do some planning. Let's do some CEO work and CFO work, of course. Um, and let's take it to the next level. All right. Thanks so much. Bye, everybody.